Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to prove the conjugate root theorem, and this is what it says. It says that if p of x is a polynomial with real coefficients, then whenever p of a plus bi is equal to zero, p of a minus bi is automatically equal to zero. Hmm. Yeah, so first, very important to pay attention to this. It says real coefficients. But yeah, if you've got a polynomial with real coefficients, put more succinctly, what this is telling us is that if z is equal to a plus bi, a complex number in standard form, whenever p of z is equal to zero, it automatically implies that p of z bar is equal to zero, where z bar is a minus bi, the conjugate of z. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, um, conjugate root theorem can also be written for polynomials with rational coefficients, and this is what it'd read if we wrote it for polynomials with rational coefficients. It would say that whenever p of a plus root b is equal to zero, p of a minus root b is equal to zero. Now, as complex numbers, um, a plus bi and a minus bi are considered conjugates, complex conjugates. Um, and while they're not complex numbers, a plus root b and a minus root b are also considered conjugates. Yeah, okay, cool. Hence, why in both cases, we're still talking about the conjugate root theorem. What we're going to prove is this statement for um, z, a complex number, a plus bi. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. First, uh, there are four properties of complex uh, conjugation that we need to state. They're all pretty easy to prove, but the first one says that um, z bar is z1 bar is equal to z2 bar for two complex numbers, z1 and z2, only if they're equal to begin with. So z1 bar is equal to z2 bar automatically implies that the two complex numbers z1 and z2 are equal. So that's the first. And this is another one. I'm not going to explain this one. And this is a third one for multiplication, the second one for addition, obviously. And then the last one here. And this is just like three, well, where we're using z1, z2, and uh, z all the way through zn being just z, right? Like this is basically four is a repeat application of three, clearly, right? But anyway, these four properties are important to keep in mind as we do this proof. It's equally important to keep in mind that a polynomial uh, with uh, real coefficients can be written in this way, where a, a sub n, a sub n minus one, a one, a zero, and everything in between, all the coefficients are real, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So that's a polynomial written standard form with real coefficients a sub n's. Yeah, okay, cool. And um, I like here uh, highlighted to say that we can simplify that a bit more and just write this for our polynomial P of X, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now we've got all the ingredients to start the proof. So let's start and it's actually a very fun proof and it's pretty straightforward also. So proof is to start, we know that P of Z is equal to zero. We're given that, right? Like we're given P of A plus B I is equal to zero. So we know to start P of Z is equal to zero. Got it. Now, let's take this and conjugate on both sides. I notice that this is this here is arrived at by uh, this first property of um, complex conjugation, which is if we know that this complex number here, uh, P of Z, is the same as this complex number here, 0, and remember 0 is a complex number, then we've got our Z1, P of Z, and then Z2 being 0, and so Z1 bar should equal z2 bar and therefore p of z bar should equal zero bar obviously the complex number zero has um itself as being its conjugate in other words zero bar is zero clearly yeah p of z bar however is a bit more work right p of z bar first of all um is going to look like this why you say because uh P of Z would be replacing this X with Z, meaning we replace all these other X's with a Z. That's just P of Z. And so P of Z bar would be like replacing all these X's with a Z and then putting a bar over this whole thing because all of this is P of Z, right? All of this here is P. Well, once we replace the X's with a Z, all of this will be P of Z. So P of Z bar will be all of this um bar where again the x's are replaced with a z and that's just this here now we know p of z bar has to equal zero bar which is again zero which we'll show next but yeah like p of z bar which is equal to this is in turn equal to zero bar from what we have here okay but then by using property two of complex conjugation right here we could do something about this expression here with a bunch of plus signs right and this is what we can do about it which is like conjugate each term and add them. 
Now, I have intentionally highlighted the coefficients because remember, we're working with real coefficients. And just like how zero bar is just zero, for any real number, uh, its conjugate is that number itself. In other words, the conjugate of a sub n here, since a sub n is real, is just a sub n itself. And likewise for a sub n minus one and so on. But first, before we get there, which is like before we could just claim the conjugate of a sub n is just a sub n, we need to use uh, property three for a multiplication because we've got multiplication here, multiplication here, multiplication here, and everywhere, right? So if we use property um, three for a multiplication and keep in mind that the coefficients, since they're real, they are their own conjugate, then we can write this um, here, right? Okay, cool. All right, all right, all right. And now I'm going to highlight the other guys in here, right? Like I'm going to highlight the uh, terms involving uh, or the parts involving z and not highlight the coefficients in my next slide. It's obvious why I want to do that and why, why I want to highlight them because I want to show how we go from here to here, which is using property four, right? Okay. Um, and everywhere uh, I, I've used property four. Well, in this part, I don't have to, but everywhere before uh, these um, last two terms, I have to use property four, um, having. Um, picked up where I left off here in this step, right? Okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. But wait, looking at this here, this here, the last thing I displayed here, that's P of Z bar. And so we just said, since this here is P of Z bar, and this here, right, this here is the same as this here, we see that our conclusion is that P of Z bar has to equal zero. And we got there, uh, from the assumption that P of Z is equal to zero and only by using these four properties of complex conjugation. Yeah. All right, cool. I hope you enjoyed this. And yes, I know like towards the end, I kind of stuttered a little bit, but I like this video and I'm going to keep it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, take care. Keep watching.